Për shëndetje miq, familia 7 nga mledhë sërrisht si gjdo të shtun. Uroj keni pasur një javë të qetë, sonte do të kemi nderin të komunikojmë sërrisht me një mësues të njërë të Biblës me mbi 30 vite eksperiencë dhe njëri rrëtë interpretimit biblik. Gjdo mua i është një ndërftuar i tanë besnik në këtë program duke qënë se temat e trajtuara kanë gjallur interes edhe ndjekës të shumët në kanë shkruar. Sonte do të flasim për frymen e rebelimit brënda qeverive sot. Jemi në një lidhja online me doktor Baru Korman. Për shëndetje dhe faliminderi që u bërë sërish pjesë e familja 7. I'm very thankful to be part of TV7 and what you're doing to reach Albania and other places for the truth of God's word. Shumë faleminderit, ndërkohë unë po kaloj me njëherë të kë pyetja e parë për sonte, doktor Baruk, qëfar është fryma e rebelimit? Well, we're talking about the last days, and in the last days, there's going to be a characteristic that is going to be very common in the world. God is going to want to bring about a change, a transition from this world into the kingdom of God. And there's going to be rebelliousness. There's going to be led by governments because eventually we know based upon Revelation chapter 13 that all the nations of the world, and we're speaking about governments, are going to be brought under the leadership of the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is going to want to thwart, to stop what God's doing. So that spirit of rebellion that's going to characterize all the world and all the governments is going to be against the purposes of God. And that means that every individual is going to have to make a decision now whether they want to submit to the purposes of God, obey his will, and that begins, of course, with receiving the gospel, or whether someone is going to reject God's invitation to salvation. That word salvation in the original language is a word of victory. Whether we want to share in God's victory of his kingdom or whether someone's going to reject that. And the world, those who belong to the world, are going to reject. And that rejecting of God's purpose, his plan, his salvation is rebelliousness and that's what's going to characterize the world and the governments of the world. A është profetizuar në Bibel një rebelimi tili qeverive? Yes, we see that very clearly in what I alluded to in Revelation chapter 13. We see that there's going to be a beast. Prophetically, a beast is an empire and there's going to rise up, the scripture says, out of the sea. And that term C speaks about incivility, a time of chaos, a time of great problems. So it's because of these great problems that the world is going to have a sense of desperation, confusion, hopelessness, and the world is going to turn to anyone that promises a change. The problem is the one who's going to promise this change is going to be the Antichrist. And he, whether he's ruling at first or not, his empire is going to come up out of Europe. We learned that from Daniel chapter 8. And therefore, we see that that empire is going to bring about stability. The world's going to like this. It's going to bring about peace, but it's a false peace. It's also going to bring about a time of prosperity. So because of this instability, the problems, the hardships, the changes in the world that are going to be very difficult, when this, this empire arises that brings peace and stability and prosperity, most of the world, those that do not know the truth of prophecy, are going to embrace this falsehood, this, this rebelliousness. And I say again, rebelliousness according to the character of God, according to the things that are pleasing of God. So it is prophesied in the Bible, and we need to be aware of that so that we are prepared, that we're ready, and that we know the truth so that we can walk in obedience to the truth and be an example to bear witness of the things of God and to show that we don't belong to this world, but we belong to the kingdom. The pyetja ime e radhës është cili është burimi kësaj të fryme? It's a very important question. We see the source of this spirit is Satan. One of the ways that we, we talk about our Lord and Savior, Messiah, he's the son of God, 
And therefore, we see a connection between the Spirit of God and Messiah. When Messiah says, I won't leave you nor forsake you, he says, I won't leave you as orphans, but I'll send you my Spirit. So Messiah and those who are his followers have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit within us. But in the same way that, that God entered into this world, we talk about the incarnation, uh, uh, God taking upon himself human flesh in a counterfeit, in a false representation of that, the Antichrist is going to kind of be Satan incarnate. The spirit of Satan is going to be the character of the Antichrist. And, and we see that in the scripture, that that character, when we speak about the empire, the beast, it's going to have blasphemous names. And that's the characteristic of that, that Antichrist in the last days, that spirit of rebelliousness is going to be a blasphemous spirit, meaning against that which is pleasing to God, against the character of God, and against the glory of God. We know, for example, in the book of, of Isaiah in chapter 14, that Satan, there he's called Lucifer, meaning that he's a, a false, that word Lucifer really comes from the term light and a desire to praise God. He's not going to want to praise God. He's not want, wanting the glory of God, and he's going to want to put his kingdom over the kingdom of God. That's that spirit of rebelliousness. And many places in the scripture, it speaks about how this antichrist, this, this false leader, is going to want to, to establish his kingdom above God's kingdom. We know he won't be successful. He has been cast down out of heaven to this world. He knows that his time is short. And again, the call of the people of God, those who are followers of Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, we are called to live differently. We're called to behave in light of the truth of God, where the spirit of rebelliousness is a spirit of falsehood. And again, a blasphemous spirit. So when we look in the last days in prophecy, especially in the book of Revelation, we see that spirit of rebelliousness being spoken of as a blasphemous spirit against the character of God, against the will of God, against the purposes of God, and against the establishment of the kingdom of God. The far number on chat must push to a Well, that spirit of rebelliousness is also according to the teachings of Messiah. We look in Matthew 24 about the last days. He says in that there's going to be uh, deception. Don't let anyone deceive you. And therefore, Paul says the same thing about deception. That spirit of rebelliousness is a spirit of being deceived. And, and how can we ensure that we're not deceived? That we embrace the truth. What does the scripture say? The truth will set you free. And Messiah, he is the truth, the way, and the life. When we receive that gospel, we're embracing the truth. A very important scripture that Paul gives us is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And there it says that they believed a lie. They were deceived because they rejected the truth. So it's when we reject the truth of Scripture that we're going to be deceived and embrace that spirit of rebelliousness. So the way that we ensure that we don't have that spirit of, of rebellion is if we embrace the truth. And the only place we find truth is in the Word of God. We order our life. We submit to the instructions of God, the commandments of God, the Word of God. When we do that and we're submissive to His instructions, we won't be deceived and we won't be walking in rebelliousness. We'll be walking in obedience. And that's what every believer is called to do. We all know that we're not saved by good works. It's not our obedience that saves us. But having been saved by the grace of God through faith, we, that faith is going to work itself out in our life and produce obedience. What does the scripture say? We'll know them by their fruits. And that's both ways. Those who are believers, our fruit, our obedient, our good works. 
And likewise, those who have rejected the truth of God will know them by their fruit, that is their bad deeds, their unrighteous acts. Pythia ime radhës Baruk është cila është ndërlidhja midis qeverive dhe frimësër e belimit. Well, the the relationship between the government and the spirit of rebellion, the government is not going to be every government eventually is going to be against the word of God. We're seeing that more and more in various countries we see for example that there are governments and they're embracing a lifestyle of of what God calls an abomination. We see for example in the United States. I live in Israel but I used to live in America. We see that several years ago an embrace marriage between man and man and woman and woman. We see that that is an abomination that is against God's order. And anything that is against God's order is rebelliousness. And more and more and more we see the governments of the world coming together in unity against the things of God. And this is that spirit of rebelliousness. Governments are doing that because all too often they are under the authority of the enemy instead of under the authority of God. And what's the foundation of that? Truth. If a government embraces truth, it is going to be submissive to God. If it rejects truth, it is going to be obeying that obeying that spirit of rebelliousness. And we're seeing more and more how governments are are coming together. There's a unity in how the governments of Europe, the governments of Asia, the governments in the West, in America and South America, how they're coming together with a common uh, philosophy. And this common philosophy is against the scripture, against the commandments of God. And, and this is why they're doing it, because they are going to be brought under obedience to the Antichrist empire rather than to be obedient to the will of God, the word of God, and the will of God. So that's what it comes down to. The governments are going to obey the will of the enemy rather than the will of the Savior. Pra, ka një përshkrimë të qartë, a ka ndo një fjaqe e përshkruan më qartë frymen e rebelimit? I think a great word for us to use and, and, and be aware of is unrighteousness. This is the important thing. And righteousness, righteous behavior, manifests the glory of God. It honors God. Unrighteousness dishonors God. It is against God and it honors the enemy. So what we're seeing today is governments all over the world. They are behaving unrighteously. They're making laws and their governments are governments of unrighteousness. They are in disagreement with the commandments of God. So unrighteousness is, is really a key word in helping us understand what rebelliousness produces. The world hates those who belong to the world, the governments, they hate the glory of God. And righteousness, as I said, manifests God's glory. Unrighteousness is a way of honoring the enemy. And this is what we're seeing today, unrighteousness. The, si kjo me, me the Spirit of God and the law of God have the same purpose. When we look, for example, in the book of Genesis, in, in chapter 1, God created the heavens and the earth, and we see something. The Hebrew term is tohu vevohu. Oftentimes, in other languages, it speaks about the world being empty or void, and that term simply means out of order. When something is out of order, it's not pleasing to God. And we see that the Spirit of God was moving, and it brought about a change. It brought about the order of God. And what did God say? Behold, it's good, very good. The word good relates to the will of God. So when we look at this world, we see that the world is against the order of God. It is against the law of God. Why? The law of God 
reveals the purpose of God. The law, by the way, is when the law is fulfilled, it manifests righteousness. Let me give you an example of that from the New Testament. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, what a wonderful chapter that eighth chapter of Romans is. And it says, those who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Notice this, the spirit. Those who walk according to the spirit fulfill the righteousness of the law. So the law and righteousness. Now, the law doesn't make us righteous, but the law defines what is right and what is wrong, what is righteous and what is unrighteous. So we see that the spirit moves in our life in order to produce that which is righteous, that which is in accordance with the instructions of God. Many times we hear that word law, and we really don't know that the word law is simply instruction. It's the instruction of God so that we can do the things that are pleasing to him. In the scripture, for example, Paul speaks of the Antichrist as the man of sin. What is sin? A violation of the law. He also says that the Antichrist is the man of lawlessness. Now, he's against that word lawlessness is simply the Greek word nomos for law and the letter alpha, which means against. He's against the law. He's lawless. And why is he like that? Because he understands that the law relates to righteousness and he doesn't want anything righteous. So that's why we see that the Antichrist is the man of lawlessness. He's the man of sin because he doesn't want God's purposes. When God's purposes are being done, it's pleasing to God. It's honoring of God. It's glorifying of God. And as we move in the last days, we're going to see that, that Satan, and remember the Antichrist is a, a, a tool of Satan, a servant of Satan. He is going to be, be against all those things that bring God glory. In the same way that Satan did not want to honor God, but he wanted to rebel. He had that spirit of rebelliousness. So what we're seeing is, as we approach the last days, this conflict between good and evil, this conflict between, between Satan and his servant, the Antichrist, and the real Christ and the real God. For example, in the book of Daniel, we see that there is going to be that, that Antichrist government. It's called in Daniel chapter 8 by the term the beast is a goat, and he is going to wage war against the heavens. His battle is not just in this world, but also in the, the heavenly realm. And this is what we need to be prepared for. Ultimately, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers of darkness, uh, against those realms and heavenly places. But that battle is going to take place also here on, on earth. And that's why I keep repeating myself saying the church needs to be ready. We need to know what the enemy is about, what his characteristic is, so that we can identify him and stand for righteousness, stand in obedience, stand according to the truth of God. That's what we're called to do. Edhe një pyetje fundit, Dr. Baruk, si duhet t'i përgjigjemi ne këtij rebelimi? We we should respond in obedience to the word of God. And that's why it's so important to know Scripture. It is only when we obey the Word of God are we going to find ourselves in the will of God and doing the will of God. It's the revelation of Scripture that shows us how we get to where God wants us to be. It's also the revelation of Scripture that tells us while we're there in the will of God what we should be doing. When we look at the last days, we see something. In fact, one of the, the, the neat things about the book of Revelation is that John, in the book of Revelation, really breaks everyone up into two groups. You either are those that dwell upon the earth or dwell in heaven. And it has nothing to do with where one's physically located. Those who dwell upon the earth are those who belong to this world. Those who have rejected the kingdom. Those who dwell in heaven they are also in this world, 
but they don't belong to this world. They are kingdom minded. They are kingdom people. They, they follow not the ways of this world, but they follow kingdom principles and kingdom truth and kingdom law. And this is really the battle that's being set up. A, a, a battle between whether you're going to obey the world or whether you're going to obey God. And the problem, when I see that's so, so alarming, so disappointing, so discouraging, is that many uh, uh, Christian denominations, they are compromising with the things of the world rather than standing up. Now we know why. So many people don't want to be persecuted. Well, of course, no one wants to suffer. But if you were to ask me, what is the message for the church today? I would say this, take up your cross and follow me. Now, the cross involves suffering, suffering that leads to death. And that's what we need to realize. How we respond to what is about to happen is that we take up our cross, we follow him. We're willing to die for truth. We're willing to suffer persecution in order to obey the revelation of God, his word. And this is what's happening today. More and more congregations, local churches, are compromising. They're turning away from the study of God's word. They are turning away from the truth, and they are embracing a distorted, a deceived message. And this, how, this is how I know that we're approaching the last days. The Bible speaks of, and Paul says this, that in the last days there's going to be an apostasy. This means turning away from truth. This is what's happening today. That spirit of rebelliousness can also be called a spirit of apostasy, turning away from the truth and embracing this world. We are called not to do that. We are called to be faithful to the word of God. And it's only when we're faithful to the word of God are we going to have God's perspective, not only God's perspective, but God's provision, that means his power, in order to overcome. I'll, I'll conclude with this. When we look at the, the seven churches in Revelations chapter 2 and 3, they are called to overcome. He says many different things to each of these seven congregations. But what he says to each of them is you're called to overcome. And those who hear what the Spirit is saying, having spiritual ears, listening to spiritual truth, that's how we overcome. And sadly today, I think that there's too many within the church that are listening to the world and allowing the world to distort and, 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 and speak rebelliousness against the things of God. So we are called to be different. Bible calls us to be a peculiar people, to be separate. What does he say in the book of Revelation? Come out of Babylon. Babylon is a word that relates to the world. Come out of the world. Be holy. Be different. Be peculiar. Be that special people that are defined and described according to the truth of God. That's the message for, for believers today, to come out and be different by being, obedience to, be obedient to the word of God. Dr. Baruch, to falenderoj, faleminderit për të gjitha shpjegime që na bën në ndritën e fjallës e Zotit, ne do të dëgjojmë i sërish. Looking forward to the next time. May God bless TV7 and all the good work that you're doing. Shumë faleminderit, ndërkohë miq mos u largoni, rikthemi pas pak në studio.